you guys were super amazing and supportive and DM'd me and commented, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. What is this video about? <laughs> Joe, get it together. <laughs> Let's try that again. Hey guys, we're back. <laughs> and welcome back to the second video that I am ever shooting by myself. I don't know why I feel like this is so much harder and different than when I talk to you guys on stories. Probably because I'm not used to it yet. But that's not what this video is about. So this week I posted a bikini picture on my Instagram. Throwback to my days holding a hose. In my front lawn, back when I was shooting for Real Housewives, that was my version of doing chores around the house. Uh, what? <laughs> my, how I've grown up since then. You guys were so kind to DM me a bunch of questions from my days on Housewives. And today I'm gonna be taking my phone, we're gonna be pulling up Instagram by no particular order, I'm literally just gonna pick 10 to 15 questions and we're just gonna answer them. I made a little cup of joe because you know, me. <laughs> okay, here we go. What was it like to be a real housewife of OC at such a young age? How did you feel when you found out about Slade and Gretchen's relationship? Well, we are taking absolutely no time to get into the tea. <laughs> I really need whiskey. Okay, let's start with the easy question. So being so young on the show, I was 25 years old. I had no idea, number one, what I was jumping into. This world that I had been thrown into behind the gates of Coda de Casa with Slade and his life with two kids, having had two moms, that was a lot. And I did not come from money. I was born in Lima, Peru. I came from very humble beginnings. I'm actually the first graduate of my family. I don't think that I really knew what I had at the time. When you're that young, I just don't think, number one, I appreciated the lifestyle that Slade gave me. Let's start with that. I had just graduated from college. I was still a baby and haven't experienced life. And now you add cameras and production to your world and in a way I grew up in front of all of America and fortunately to my dismay there were decisions that I made on camera that I kind of wish had never happened shall we say but that's what happens when you're on a reality show and reality back then was not really a big thing it was road rules and there was Laguna Beach. And those were kind of the two big reality shows back then. And then there was us. So, especially that young, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. This was literally the beginning of my life changing forever. So, there's that. All right, question number two. Were you really friends with the other housewives or was it forced for TV? Okay, so when I first met them, I was really meeting them for the first time. And I think from working with them every single day, us all being together for so many hours a week, like you get up and you go to work and you become really close with the people that are maybe on your team or that you work with and they become your work fam. So that's definitely what the cast became for me. And Bravo and production also became my family. And so I personally don't think that was for TV. Okay, next question. Did all the cast members get along while shooting season one? <laughs> Um, I think we all got along. There were definitely moments when we did a interview on camera, you know, with an outlet like Access Hollywood or E. Maybe we would show up wearing the same colored top or something like that. Or we would go to an event and show up in like the same color dress, taking a picture for camera. Maybe some people didn't like it if we accidentally showed up in the same color, no names mentioned. <laughs> but honestly, that's just the nature of being the cast. It's kind of like your sisters, right? You fight like sisters and you fight like family. None of us really brought that like negative energy to the group. Also, it was very early on in the season and so there wasn't really any cattiness 
I was a lot younger than everybody else and so I really looked up to the success of Vicky and the amazing mother that Lori was to her kids and Gina having been so successful as well, having these amazing kids that I became friends with being the youngest. I think we were very lucky that it was a cast that all supported each other and we definitely all got along. Okay, next question. How was your breakup with Slade and are you friendly now? Will you come back to the series? <laughs> um, okay, would I ever come back to the series? Let's start with the easier question. I think whenever people ask me this question, I used to say no. And I think it was just because I just had all this stuff happen with me and Slade and breaking up, especially after I found out that Slade and Gretchen were together. It was just a lot to kind of um, learn, right? There was just a lot of drama circling that and I needed a beat. So much of what had happened, I just, was still holding on to because again I was young and immature and didn't understand what forgiveness means and all of that and so I think that I just kind of attached the two together and I just kind of it's kind of like finding out that your ex-boyfriend is now with somebody new even if you've moved on nobody wants to see their ex-boyfriend move on you're gonna judge the new person he's with if you're telling me you don't you're lying <laughs> You're gonna have an opinion about it, at least, right? It was too fresh, I wasn't ready. Now, it's been years and I'm in a different place and because I'm in a different place, I would say if I ever got asked to be on the show, I would definitely be open to it. However, I live in LA and the show is Real Housewives of Orange County, so I would probably have to move to Orange County and if I did that, it would definitely be a big life change because I've been living in LA since I left the show, so you know, for most of my adulthood now. I'm kind of a city girl at this point and I really love it, but now I say never say never. So Andy, if you're watching, call me. Only if you want me though. My breakup with Slade wasn't great. I think I was just really young. I wasn't ready for somebody like him. We were 15 years older. I was a baby. He was a dad of two. We were in two completely different places in life. And I think that that was portrayed on camera and I was kind of having to live out my immaturity at the time, right? I was going out, I was partying, I was driving up to LA with friends at the clubs while he was at home with the kids. So that definitely didn't portray me the best, right? It was the first time I had ever dated anybody with kids. And so it was really hard to break up because not only was the breakup with him, but I was also leaving the kids behind. And you know, after being with somebody for that long, that's a hard thing to do. No one ever likes to break up, it's never like a great thing so unfortunately it didn't work out I think that time heals everything and I think that as time went on everybody ended up exactly where they should and we're all in a better place now okay next random question I'm just gonna scroll all right do you still have the Jace smiley license plate was the scene of you leaving it behind and driving away real <laughs> Who remembers the J Smiley S Smiley license plate? Wow, we were so embarrassing. Yes, so for those of you that missed it, we used to have uh, the like Newport Beach palm trees with the sun license plate in the back and you can personalize it. So I had J Smiley, Slade had S Smiley. And um, I definitely do not have that license plate anymore. He took it off my car and he probably burned it. And driving away, that was actually a real thing that was not for a camera. And um, I think we had gotten in one of our million fights that time. And yeah, that was real, sadly, but it was real. Back then, what do you think it was that led you to be so infatuated with that life? And you can't say it was because you were young and naive. <laughs> I don't think I was infatuated with that life. I just kind of lived that life. And so to me, money wasn't something I was used to. I think what it was, was I was more feeling like I was living a fairy tale, right? I was living in a 6,000 square foot house and you know, Slade was taking me to Paris and Monaco for my 26th birthday and we were going on trips with a yacht, 25 of us couples with a butler for my 25th birthday, sailing all around the south of France and I was going on shopping sprees and all this stuff that any girl in the world would love. And I feel like a lot of girls that's what they think that they want. But the reality of it was I wasn't happy. I was so young and not ready for that life. I wasn't ready to be a mom. I wasn't ready for the housewife life. And I was drinking a lot in our humongous movie room, vodka straight. And 
I was unhappy because I was so torn with just wanting to be a kid then and then this life that Slade was wanting to give me. So it was like this constant struggle and battle that I was fighting internally of like, do my own thing. And then this other part of me loved him so much and wanted to try to make it work. So it was, it was a challenge. Are you and Gretchen still friends? Um, Gretchen and I no longer talk. Yeah, we don't talk anymore. We'll just leave it at that. I loved your season of The Real Housewives. Did you and Gina's son ever have a fling? <laughs> or was the flirtation more for the show than anything else? It's so funny. A lot of you wanted to know if Shane and I ever got together. <laughs> Full disclosure, I had the biggest crush on Shane ever. Of course I did. Look at him. He's beautiful. But I was with Slade, and so while I was in a relationship with Slade, of course nothing was going to happen with Shane and I, and we just innocently flirted on the show. And I looked to Gina as like, I call her Mama Gina, because um, she was actually the one I was closest to on the show. And so, you know, it was pretty clear. I mean, I would tell Gina all the time how cute Shane was, but I would never disrespect Slade like that when we were together so yeah that was that how intrusive were the cameras were they with you around the clock also did they manipulate events or get togethers so how intrusive were the cameras at first it's weird you have these cameras around you and it's very apparent that they're there you can feel them right you have a mic and a big pack on the back of your body and sometimes like a big boom which is the mic that kind of goes overhead they kind of hold on you sometimes the danger was that eventually the cameras kind of disappeared that vulnerability and those nerves that you have they kind of disappear and you get more comfortable and then you're willing to say whatever so and then you add a little alcohol into the mix and all bets are off you start to do things on camera that you wish you hadn't number one and number two you just start to to become very comfortable with the cameras being there. I think that your true character comes out, but also that makes for a really good TV and really good ratings, so there's that. Okay, next question. What do you miss about filming? Was the salary good? <laughs> What I miss the most about filming was all the perks that we got. So we had hair, we had makeup, we had a stylist that would come in. Now this was season two. Season one, we had no budget. Also, the salary, it was really, really small for the entire season because we were really just the pilot season. Again, reality wasn't really a big thing. But then season two came and then all of a sudden we had drivers that were picking us up and taking us to interviews. Um, you know, Bravo would send a car and then we were doing bigger photos photo shoots for the cover of Real Housewives and we would have hair and makeup and I remember um, this beautiful diamonds jewelry uh, woman named Barbara would come in and she would lay out all these beautiful diamonds uh, and jewelry for us to pick from and then we had all these outfits and dresses to choose from. Now first season we were really big on sky tops. Comment below if you remember all the sky tops that we wore. <laughs> oh the sky tops. <laughs> but that's probably what I miss the most and then just getting invited to all the really fun red carpet events you know i remember hot in hollywood back then was a big thing it was young hollywood and back then i was younger i would get invited to all these really great parties and all these really great award shows i mean who wouldn't miss that life right it's super fun it's like playing dress up all the time every day for a living okay i've always wondered about the trips you guys took does bravo pay for everything including food and drinks or how much are you responsible for so sometimes they would pay for stuff, definitely. Whenever we would have, you know, like a group dinner sponsored by Bravo, they would obviously take care of it. They've always been really generous. But whenever it was anything personal, like if we were going on our own trip with our family, we definitely were responsible for our own stuff, purchasing our own alcohol to drink before we did an on-camera interview. <laughs> Guilty party of one, maybe just me, but yeah. I've also noticed in many scenes, the ladies all seem to coordinate in either colors or patterns. Did production tell you what to wear? Also, I miss the sky tops. They wouldn't ever tell us what to wear per se, but they definitely would recommend like, okay, don't wear, you know, certain colors on camera, like stripes and like really patterned things uh, made it very busy for the eye on camera. And then white, we were definitely discouraged to wear things like that just because it doesn't read well on camera. For the most part, we were able to kind of dress however we wanted, hence the sky tops. 
<laughs> How organic were some of the dramatic situations or were they mostly staged? They definitely were not staged. So whenever things would happen, they would really happen. And whatever was happening, they would really catch our reaction on camera. So when I first met the housewives, I was really meeting Kimberly and the housewives for the first time and whatever was happening on camera was really happening. Did you have lines production wanted you to say? Yes. So I remember like the intro line, which I think mine was, he's pretty much keeping me, was my like opening Real Housewives line. Um, that was something production made for me to say. It was more for like intros type of thing. Before shooting, did you have conversations with the production team about a storyline you were supposed to pursue through the season? I want all the tea. <laughs> Um, these are good production questions. Wow, I'm getting hot. Um, no, but honestly, there, there weren't any storylines back then. I'm sure they had a storyline that they were trying to kind of like do in terms of our characters, but they would never sit us down and, you know, we wouldn't have like a huddle to try to like capture that on camera. So I think it was more so whatever they caught, they caught on camera and then they would cut it into our storylines. So you would just kind of cross your heart and cross your fingers that you had been portrayed well type thing. So I feel like they were kind to me, but unfortunately all the other things I did, wearing a maid's outfit, not knowing what pledge is, dancing with a pink boa and a zebra hat. <sighs> that was sadly all me. Love, love, love you and the show since day one. Thank you. Do you still own a pair of those pink slippers? <laughs> my stinky pinkies. Oh my gosh, you guys, they were so bad. I definitely do not own any more pairs of stinky pinkies anymore. Now I think I have a pair of like Ugg slippers that are like gray. So we've definitely upgraded since then. <laughs> Okay, so scrolling through this, Miss Gina Keo was sweet enough to leave a comment and she asks, did you enjoy filming the show? What girls do you still talk to and do you keep in touch with anyone from the show? I definitely do keep in touch with um, a lot of people from the show still, so I still obviously talk to Gina. Um, her and I have always remained close over the years, you know, through social media, text message, phone calls, and then I still keep in touch with Lori. Alexis Bellino, if you guys watch later seasons, her and I grew really close. I, you know, ended up going to Cara Keogh's wedding and I still keep in touch with her. Colton and Shane occasionally on social media, you know, will do the high. I even talk to Lori's daughter, Ashley Zarlin, who who's super cute and she's also um, has a blog and she's doing the whole influencer thing. I run into her at a bunch of events like CoverGirl and stuff like that. So yeah, I feel like over the years we still touch base at some point for whatever reason with each other. So it's nice to still kind of feel like you have that Bravo family. You and JJ were so fun together. Are you still in touch? So many people asked me about JJ in the comments and so many people remember her and I think that's amazing. Unfortunately, JJ and I lost touch over the years so I, I don't talk to her anymore. But um, yeah, I hope she's doing well. What has been the best and worst things about becoming well known? So the best thing is some of the perks that come with having been on a reality show that is now a really big franchise, right? I still get a lot of opportunities pre-quarantine getting invited to some really cool events. It is a little bit easier when I reach out to like beauty brands and fashion brands to be able to talk about my time on the show as like my introduction and then seeing if there's a way to be able to collaborate them. So it makes it a little bit easier to get through to them in terms of the opportunity. You can ask Crystal though. <laughs> it doesn't mean that I actually close it and we actually end up getting paid by them but they are definitely more willing to put me on their PR list and send me free products, so that's kind of great. The worst thing about being well-known, I think more so back then was that I would have a lot of people just come up to me in real life and give me their opinion about what was going on with my relationship with Slade or decisions that I was making in my life. I remember this one time, Slade and I were at a restaurant, we were in a fight and I was literally bawling my eyes out. He left to the bathroom and I had this like woman come up to me and like mid crying, she was like, I'm a big fan of the show. Do you mind taking a picture? And I was like, um, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, I remember just wanting to make everybody happy. And I try to be nice to people when people come up to you or if they recognize you, because that's kind of what comes with the territory. Even now, Bravo still reruns the show. And every time there is a new season of Housewives, they will sometimes start it all the way from season one and kind of run all the seasons all over again, leading up to that. And so to this day, I still get recognized. 
and I'm always very humbled that people still remember me and still care. Um, but you guys have always shown me so much love and support and so I thank you for that. Do I wish I had stuck it out in the OC and stayed on the show and not gone to LA? Seeing as how big it got and how well paid they were in later seasons. I did hear about how well paid they are in later seasons. So I wish that like that could have happened for my life because <laughs> That would be amazing. Who doesn't want to get paid more? But I definitely don't regret the decisions that I made moving to LA. I am exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. If I hadn't moved to LA, I wouldn't have met Crystal. We wouldn't have started Pop Candy Podcast. I wouldn't have quit my career in digital advertising to pursue being a fashion and beauty influencer. We wouldn't have started my journey and launched the Influencer Project. I mean, there's so many amazing things that have happened since moving to LA. I wouldn't take any of that back because I feel like I'm writing my own story now. And I'm so excited, so, so excited. I'm getting really emotional, you guys. Why am I getting emotional right now? Um, I think I'm just really scared about the future and what's gonna happen. And right now I'm just trying to generate enough income and brand deals to be able to make it and there are some really hard times that i'm going through right now because a lot of brands have stopped spending so there's a little bit of stress there right um but it doesn't matter because i wouldn't trade this moment for anything i wouldn't trade what i'm doing and pursuing my dreams for anything i am fully in startup mode i am finding places to live for 90 days because I don't know what's gonna happen and if I'm gonna make it. I don't wanna commit to like a one year lease because if something happens, I don't wanna be stuck in that. But honestly, I've never taken such a big risk in my life. And I'm so happy that I am because I'm so determined to make it as a YouTuber, as an influencer and create this dream that I have in my mind and to build, you know, this fashion and beauty platform where I can help inspire women. And if my content even helps to change one girl's life and helps to inspire her to chase her dreams, then all of this would have been worth it. And so I am doing this really raw in front of you guys. And, uh, it's not fun sometimes because, <laughs> you know, I'm showing the good stuff and the good parts, but I'm also showing the hard parts and the challenges and everything that comes with it. Like not knowing if I can make rent next month or pay my bills. Um, but this is all part of like pursuing your dreams and trying to launch a company and trying to launch a brand and get it off the ground. And so I'm really thankful for you guys. I cannot tell you how much. I don't know why I'm being so emotional right now, but I cannot tell you how much your encouragement and your support and your words help to lift my spirits. And you guys keep me so positive and you give me so much courage. And so I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I would not be able to do this without you guys. And also Crystal. <laughs> I don't know where I would be without her, so. Okay, um, I think that's my cue to wrap up this video. <laughs> I'm sorry I turned into a ball of mesh. I don't know where any of that came from, but um, thank you guys for joining me on my journey. Um, I think this is the part where I'm supposed to say, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you know the next time I post a video. And just thank you guys for joining me on this journey. <sighs> all right, I'm going to get it together now. <laughs> thank you guys for submitting all your questions and joining me on this Real Housewives Q&A. It's been a lot of fun going back down memory lane with you guys. I'm going to go get it together now. Here's to creating the life of your dreams. And here's to never settling and getting everything you've ever wanted. <sighs> I feel like this is... Oh, fudge. Did that record? Boob check. Okay. I have no idea what I'm trying to say right now. Did I answer this question? <sighs> Excuse me, I just burped. That was rude. Keeping it classy here. <sighs> ah! <laughs> we need to start over.